Well, hello there and welcome to another Minecraft tutorial. My name is Shadow C and today I'm going to bring you a slightly different sort of videos for these Minecraft tutorials. As you can see here, I have three variants of the melons and pumpkins farms, only the, the pumpkins right now because I'm trying to test something so I just I only did one side so we can look, look at this a little bit better. Uh, and so what I'm trying to prove here is I want to know which of these three farms is more productive, which yield the most melons or pumpkins through time. So what we have here is the first version of the farm which I did for the tutorial. I'm not going to teach you how to build this. If you want to know how it's done, just click on the bubble information on the bubble right there. And so as you can see, I put a chest in here and you, you see some of the yields. Secondly, this farm right here is a duplicate of Mambo Chambo's farm in his Hermitcraft series. Now, I've mentioned that he did a very similar Melons and um, Pumpkins farm in his server than the one that I've done here. And what I did here is I just copied the concept. That Now, this might not be exactly uh, the same farm, the same construct that he did, but I'm going to link it in the description, you know, the same video that I did in, in, that I linked in the last video in one of the comments, so that you can go there and see uh, what this does. And now the main difference between that farm and this farm is that in this farm the stems are separated by blocks, which means that these stems in the middle right here have two dirt blocks in which melons or pumpkins can grow. And that, according to the code, makes the rate of spawning faster. Now I'm having the normal rate of spawning right now, and as you can see it's, it's very sporadically spawned, so you uh, you probably need to do a, like a big tower tower like over here and then another tower facing the opposite side but the logic behind the melon spawn spawning in minecraft seems to be that each um, random tick so there's going to be a random chance that a pumpkin is going to spawn off of whatever stems you, the, you know the program is is looking at at the time so for example if we take this stem right here we have two possible blocks and what the program uh, supposedly does is it's going to choose randomly one block on each of the four direct sides of the stem. So this block right here is air, so it's not going to be able to spawn anything. This block is um, an observer, so again, it's, it can spawn anything. And this block right here are dirt, and it has you know it's not obstructed, so there there are the blocks where the pumpkins can spawn. Which means that in each you know tick, and there there you saw something, some action right there. In each tick. It's going to choose first, it's going to choose one um, possible spawn block right there, regardless of the status of that block, and then it's going to try and spawn a melon right there. So this is supposed to be more effective than this farm, because in this farm, as you can see, each stem has only one block in which the crops can grow, and that's going to yield one fourth of the capacity of the stem. Whereas these ones, we have two stems here, which are running at 50%, and the other ones are running at 25%. So this is likely uh, more effective than that one. And the longer you go to each side, the, you know, the closest to the 50% efficiency uh, you can get. But that should give us something. It should be like up to 75% or something like that. Now, this one, this one farm right here is the last version of the farm that I did right here. It's slightly more uh, expensive. You need one repeater per each of the stems, and then also you are using sticky pistons right there. Now, I'm going to choose, I'm going to teach you exactly how to build each of the farms right here. So bear, bear with me a little bit uh, after the explanation. Now, the reason why I did this farm, and I'm going to look at one YouTube comment, one second. Now, I'm looking at my last video's uh, comments right there, and the user Tendo, or T-N-D-O, said it will probably get more efficient if you use sticky pistons and a movable block in front of them, and behind the sticky piston a repeater, so the block on the sticky side comes back and doesn't get budged somewhere. Now, what does he mean about that, the budging thing? So, as you can see here, I have a repeater set to two ticks, which is going to send a pulse, into this block and then into the redstone and to the sticky piston and when the state of this changes you're gonna see a retraction uh, you know an extension and retraction <coughs> of the movable blocks which is supposed to make this farm more efficient because it's going to uh, kind of diminish the randomness of the pumpkins uh, going elsewhere now for example if i plant something here that's gonna work all the time and if i put the bone meal i'm gonna grow this again 
wow and, and you can and you just saw there a pumpkin just jumping off of the of the platform no. so what this is trying to do this this thing that is more you know expensive in a way is trying to make sure that every single bit of every single pumpkin that grows in each of these blocks is going to be moved to the side and as you can see there drop to the water so now we're going to test if that is true or not now i have a slightly different version here without the repeater right here and i want to just show you what happens if i plant something here you're going to get the bad effect that that's a a t flip-flop effectively so you have uh, the block over here and when I grow it it's going to retract and when I you know grow it again it's going to extend and then it's going to retract so that is why you need the um, I'm gonna put this the way it was <clears throat> but that's basically what you why you need the repeater here set to two ticks and I just just breaking everything everywhere but that's yeah now now it's back to to working now we're gonna make sure that this works now before we continue with this, I'm going to quickly show you how to build each of these variances of farms. Now I just left the last row of each of the farms unbuilt so, so that I can show you exactly how to do that. So we're going to start with this one which is slightly simpler. I'm going to put four blocks where the water is going to be contained. And then I'm going to go from here, blocks on each side like that and to you know you create a pattern just like that and then we're gonna go I don't remember exactly but we're gonna go to the back right there eight blocks and then I'm going to grab eight dirt blocks and now we can just put the water in each of the holes right here and use the diamond hole to plot the land and we can plant the pumpkins and remember only pumpkins in one side so you, if you want to do melons you go to the other side you probably need this water stream to be wider and you just build a similar thing on the other side with the melons now <clears throat> after that this is pretty simple four of this a block to the back which you know makes the design better than mine already and then just yeah i think you need just that some redstone and okay i'm gonna grab the piston that's kind of tricky but it's how it goes there there and there and now we need to make sure that this thing works so i'm gonna use bone meal and make sure that all of those pistons fire effectively and as you can see you get two of the piston fire <clears throat> per each of these you know observers running here but that's not a big deal uh, it's just a little you know more laggy but it's negligible you won't notice the difference so that's very simple way on how to build that second farm which is very similar to mine but slightly more efficient we shall see now this is the slightly more complicated design and I already forgot how to do it but I'm gonna try to remember so let's start with the water containments right there <clears throat> there you go and then eight dirt blocks up to here <clears throat> and then let's come up to this place with the blocks. Now let's put the water, plow the land or plot the land. I don't know how you say that. Plant the pumpkins and we're gonna go, I'm gonna go with the observers first. So we have observers here, four observers. And now behind each of the observers, one repeater set to two ticks. One tick isn't enough, I tried that. It's not enough you need two ticks now behind the the repeaters one block that is going to be power right there you go and then you need if i'm not wrong one block over here with rest on that and that would do it all right now we need the sticky pistons right here and a block 
on the front of them. And now we're going to test this with bone, bone meal. So one bone meal, there you go, it works perfectly. And now these two should fire, perfect. And now these two should fire right now. And then these two should fire, perfect. So now we have three working farms exactly the same size exactly the same amount of stems and the same amount of, of land where you know the pumpkins can grow and first of all I'm going to go and pick up everything that I have in the chests so far so 20 right here this should not be any measurement of efficiency because these farms were smaller than the other farm so you know you shouldn't pay attention to this all right so we remove every item from the chests right here and I'm going to just remove everything from my inventory and I'm going to AFK here for a while and see how this goes. All right, so I AFK for about 20 minutes. This is a very short period of time, but we should be start to see some tendencies around here. So we're gonna check this. I already see that two pumpkins are floating over there and we have 12 right here in the chest. Now into this farm, which should be slightly about 20% more efficient Let's see. Oh, okay. So we have 12 pumpkins also in this farm. So what we can tell from this is that these two farms are slightly the same when it comes to yield, to pumpkin yield. Now, I would still go with this one uh, only because it's a little bit, you know, less expensive. It, it requires less blocks than the slightly more complicated farm right here. Uh, granted, you could change this by blocks and this for redstones. I mean, you can improve this a little bit and make it exactly the same uh, cost, you know, as this farm right here. Uh, but yeah, they are the same, even though this should work faster. And remember why we are on version 1.13.2 of Minecraft. So this might be just something that is happening right now with the, with the pumpkin spawn rate. Uh, now for the last one, which has been suggested by the member that left a comment in the video, and should be more efficient because of the block that lies in front of, of the sticky piston right there and also more expensive we can tell already 18 pumpkins is about 20 to 30 percent more efficient than the ones right here so that's awesome uh, i think uh, we don't really need we could afk for hours and we will start seeing you know a better trend in terms of you know we will eliminate the randomness factor of the of of this now granted there's one pumpkin that landed here so maybe if i extended the water current a little bit over to this side i would i could make these farms a little bit more efficient than the others and i'm not sure if if it's because of the layout but this one hasn't landed any pumpkins on the rim right here or maybe it was just random i don't know why but the conclusion that i would take here is that this farm yes is more efficient I'm not sure if it is 100% efficient, maybe not. I've seen some pumpkins like uh, sort of landing on one of these blocks and then just teleporting down onto the water streams. I'm not sure why. I'm not sure if this is a quirk of, of the 1.13.2 version uh, of Minecraft. I'm not sure how this would behave in 1.12. Maybe I would say that probably the same. I don't, I'm not aware that this logic has changed in any ways. Uh, during the the, you know, the last update but yeah you can see that this farm even though it's more expensive and uh, you probably won't have these resources in the very very early stages of the game you might be able to improve on this one for example just it, it just needs a you know one extra layer of blocks and rest on uh, it is sticky pistons so you need maybe a slime farm or you need you know a couple of nights on swamps just chasing the the, the slimes and then you need one repeater per observer. So there you have it, a uh, slightly, slightly more efficient farm right here. Thank you for the user that suggested this improvement because I think this, if you had more resources, this would be the way to go. Now, if you're in early stages of the game and you need to trade with the villagers, now, you know, I, I would suggest that you go with this one. You don't really miss, you know, too much. Uh, let's check it out again. Yeah, like 19 and then I have 12. In its side and we just saw the action right there you can see that the that the block pushes the the pumpkins you know further along uh, laterally so it doesn't really get caught in in the structure as these ones do so without further ado i'm going to wrap it up for this video thank you for watching if you like leave a like or comment 
or subscribe to my channel for some of Minecraft tutorials and then check my survival series in which I'm starting to do some, some farms as well. So you're gonna see some of this stuff applied to a real survival world uh, very soon. So thank you for watching and goodbye.